Hi there, thanks for buying the Andrin Torsion Viscometer, one of a range of products that we supply for quality control and quality assurance. Uh, we put this short video together to help you to set up the instrument uh, and to use it, and also we've given you some hints on routine maintenance. Basically, if you keep it clean, it will give you years of trouble-free service. The first job is to check that we've got all the component parts when we take them out of the box. We've got the main body of the viscometer, got the, fly, the wire guard with its securing nut fitted, we have a wire, we have a flywheel and a flywheel boss, we have the terminal, the cup and the bob. Fit the flywheel boss into the flywheel, screw it in, only needs to be hand tight, don't need any tools, we'll make sure it's secure. Put the wire guard into its position, screw it in, hand tight to the front of the support bar, make sure that it's secure and then tighten the locking nut underneath. Carefully remove the wire from its protective stick. Carefully check the new wire for kinks, it must be straight without any at all. You just go right over the edge of the wire, have a look down, particular areas are likely to be at the ends of the ferrules. Here we can see an example of an old wire that can't be used anymore. You can see there's a definite kink in the wire here. This can't be straightened out and this wire needs to be thrown away and replaced with a new one. To secure the wire to the terminal, first of all, slacken the, secure, the top securing screw. Very carefully take the wire, insert it as far as it will go into the terminal, making sure you don't bend the wire while you're doing it, and then screw down the screw, making sure it's secure. A slight tug just to see that it's in place is all that's needed. Carefully feed the free end of the wire down the wire guard, taking it, pushing the terminal onto the top. Make sure that the lower terminal screw is loose. To attach the wire to the flywheel terminal, it's quite useful to use some little bits of scrap card. So if you put three pieces of card under the flywheel just to lift it up, then with a pair of pliers, just hold the ferrule on the wire. Open the securing screw, push the wire into place and secure. And then when you take the card away, the flywheel is pretty well in the right position. To operate correctly, the instrument must be perfectly level. And for this there are three levelling feet. Two at the front, one at the back. By adjusting the feet up and down, you can move the flywheel into place. Here we can see that by adjusting the height with the levelling feet, the flywheel begins to move. This viscometer is not fitted with a spirit level, but in fact it doesn't really need one. What you can see is that the edge of the flywheel and the inner edge of the scale will effectively give you a spirit level. So the idea is to make sure that when the machine is level, the flywheel and the edge of the flywheel and the gap between the edge of the inner scale is the same all the way around, which it is in this case. Check that the stem of the bob isn't bent at all. Quite a good way of doing this is to put it on a flat surface and just roll it. If there are any bends you'll see the stem distorted. Here's an example of a damaged bob um, and if you look at the stem here when we roll it you can see there's definite movement from a fixed plane. This bob is no use and needs to be thrown away and replaced. The next job is to fit the bob. Care must be taken when you're putting the bob into place that the stem doesn't get bent. The ideal way is to push the bob in through the hole at the bottom and then hold it with your finger while you secure the lower pin so it holds it into place. 
Here we can see that the pointer is not pointing at zero, so we need to make an adjustment. Adjustments are made by turning the terminal until the zero point is reached. As we turn the terminal, it's quite useful to stop massive movement by using your finger just as a little brake. And gradually as we turn the terminal round, slowly the needle moves until it's in the zero position. Here we can see the pointer is perfectly set at zero. This is where we want to start. To check that the viscometer is set up correctly, first of all turn the flywheel through 360 degrees, release the stop assembly, allow the flywheel to swing once and on the second turn it should stop at the zero point, which this one does. Now we swing the flywheel in the opposite direction, release and what we're looking for now is the pointer again to come close to the zero mark. It should be exactly the same position on the one side of zero as the other. Normally it's acceptable to have plus or minus one degree. This one in fact was straight on to zero. There are basically two things that can go wrong with the setup. One is that the pointer wasn't zeroed in the first place. If we look at this particular example, we put the flywheel in position, we allow it to swing round, and on the second turn it actually goes past the zero mark uh, and stops. That tells us that we're not in exactly the right position. If we look at that as it stands, we can see that it's not setting at the zero point. In this case the viscometer isn't level, so when we test again we actually stop quite a long way from the right position and if you look at the flywheel there's a slight wobble. Basically you need to spend a few minutes to make sure that the point is set at zero and the machine is perfectly level. Once it's like that the best thing to do is leave it alone, don't mess with it. This viscometer offers two options to bring the sample to the bob. The first and preferred way is to place the cup on the table, raise the table into position and lock off on the back nut at the back. To release, simply just loosen the back, allow it to drop and then you can safely take the cup away. Some people prefer to use a method that was used with the old viscometers and we've got a facility for doing that on this one. Simply raise the table out of the way Bring the lower support up to a position and lock off. Drop the table back into position which allows it to move backwards and forwards. You then manually bring the cup up into position and lower it down. To release you take the cup, you move the table out of the way and you bring it down and away. The disadvantage of this method is there's a tendency always to drag the cup out to the side in which case you're likely to bend the bob. To do a test make sure that the bob is clean before you start. Put the sample in the cup and stir it. Always try and stir it in the same way between tests so you have a repeatable procedure. And the sample up to the machine and raise into place. Turn the flywheel through 360 degrees. Release the flywheel and watch where it stops on the second rotation. In this case we note that it stopped at 267, which is fairly typical of a ceramic material.